We begin tonight with a developing story we've been following most of the day. Authorities say a teenager is the one who sparked an hours long standoff on the northeast side this afternoon. It's still going on as we speak. San Antonio police were first called to a home in the 13,000 block of O'Connor Cove after the teen allegedly assaulted his 50 year old mother. Night team's Jeffney Gray has been out there all afternoon. Jeffney, what do we know? Yes, guys, I think the sh most shocking detail of it all is that police said that it was that 17 year old son that actually cut his mother with a knife over an argument or during an argument over money. Now, police say that it all started around 2.30. San Antonio police say that the mother was cut on her shoulder before she called police about the attack. When police arrived, she and two other children in the house escaped outside. Police say the 17-year-old returned back inside the home when he saw police and had arrived and barricaded himself inside. Again, this all started over something as little as money. Apparently, the son wanted some money, uh, perhaps even took the money. And the uh, mother denied that, and that led to the disturbance, the argument, which ultimately uh, what we would classify this as is a uh, family violence. Captain Eric Hightower did say that they did have reports of other weapons inside the home as well, but did not say what kind. He says his mother has joined in the negotiation efforts to get the teenager to come outside. Again, this is all a very active scene. Hightower says that they hope that this will end with a peaceful resolution. They said that they will investigate this to see if there was some type of mental health episode, and if not, that son could face a family violence charge. Again, all of this is still under investigation. Live on the Northeast side, Jaffney Gray, KSAT. 12 news. Thank you, Jaffney. He loved his children, his country and riding his motorcycle. 35 year old army veteran Chadwick Short took his last ride this past Sunday when he was killed in a crash. Her widow tells the night team's Jaffney Gray she hopes her husband's death impacts the lives of others on the road. And I've never in my life felt such agonizing pain. Nicole Short, emotionally drained after her husband, 35-year-old Army veteran Chadwick Short, died in a motorcycle crash earlier this week. And I remember screaming at the top of my lungs, God, please don't take him. San Antonio police say Chad was riding along FM 78 when a sedan backed out of a home, causing a T-bone collision. He was on his way home. He had a one second reaction time and he laid his bike down to try and save himself. But in that one second, as he was laying the bike down, he had been ejected from the bike and he hit the car first. Police say it is unclear how each driver didn't see the other. Chad did three tours in nine years before he was honorably discharged from the army. Nicole said he loved all six of his children greatly, always finding ways to make them all laugh. He was such a goofy person. <laughs> Nicole says one of the many things she will miss the most are the several rides Chad would take her on. His motorcycle, I would consider his mistress. <laughs> he became a part of the bike. That was his therapy and it was his favorite thing to do. He went out doing what he loved. Nicole, now left with a wall of memories, hopes her husband's tragedy encourages others to pay attention on the roadways. And I want you to pray for every motorcyclist you see on the road and have their back. Jaffany Gray, KSAT 12 News. New on the night beat, a 28 year old San Antonio man has died during a training incident at Army Ranger School in Florida. Specialist James Rakenes was a student at the 6th Ranger Training Battalion. It's unclear exactly how, but the Airborne and Ranger Training Brigade says he died during the swamp phase of training on Thursday. The Army says the incident is currently under investigation. Other top stories we're following tonight. A pizza delivery driver threatened at gunpoint during a carjacking incident overnight. It all happened around 1.30 a.m. at the Exxon gas station off I-10 and West Avenue. Police say the victim was walking back to his car when a man with a gun demanded his keys. Shortly after, officers in the area spotted the vehicle, headed north on Vance Jackson and began to follow the suspect. He didn't make it far and ended up crashing into a parked trailer off Pilgrim Road before running away. At last update, he still has not been found. Authorities forced to shut down parts of Highway 281 near Bitters overnight after a vehicle crashed into an 18-wheeler there. It all happened around 2.15 this morning. Police say the 18-wheeler carrying dairy products was headed north when it was hit. The impact caused the driver of the rig to lose control and slam into a wall divider. 
Both drivers were able to get out of this one uninjured. The gas tank, however, of the rig was ruptured during the impact, but cleanup crews were able to quickly get that under control. No word yet on any charges. News around Texas now. A man accused of shooting and injuring a DPS trooper has been found dead. According to DPS, 36-year-old Arthur Pinson Jr.'s body was found this evening. His death, an apparent suicide. A manhunt for Pinson began after he allegedly shot trooper Chad Walker last night. Walker was called to assist a stranded driver last night close to the intersection of U.S. Highway 84 near the city of Mejia. That driver was Pinson, whose vehicle was parked on the shoulder off of the roadway when Walker arrived. But before Walker could even stop, Pinson got out of his vehicle with a handgun and fired multiple rounds through the trooper's windshield, striking him in the head and stomach. That's according to DPS, which reports Pinson then returned to his vehicle, grabbed a black backpack and took off running into the woods. Trooper Walker was taken to the hospital where he remains in critical condition. Let's take a look now at local coronavirus numbers here for Bear County. Health officials announcing tonight 153 new cases and no new deaths. In addition, 187 people are in local hospitals tonight with 75 in intensive care and 34 on ventilators. A reminder from the city, anyone 80 or older can visit the Alamo Dome in the afternoon Monday through Saturday to get a COVID-19 vaccine without an appointment. And volunteers showed up in droves this morning to help prepare Freeman Coliseum for incoming migrant children who will be sheltered there temporarily. As many as 2,400 children who cross the U.S.-Mexico border without an adult family member will be housed in the Coliseum's Expo Halls. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says they expect most children to be there for up to a week before being released to either a family member here in the U.S. or a licensed care facility here in San Antonio. A 60-day agreement to house the children expires on May 30th. Taking a look outside with live cam, it is still quite warm out there. We're sitting in the mid to upper 70s here in San Antonio, and there are still some spots across South Texas with readings in the 80s at this hour. So it was a warm and humid day for sure. Here's our almanac for San Antonio. I want you to look over on the right hand side of your screen that 88. That was our high temperature this afternoon, more than 10 degrees above average for this time of year and just eight degrees away from the record for today's date. Looking ahead to Sunday, the rest of the weekend, we will shift gears a little bit. Notice not nearly as warm tomorrow. We've got a front coming through tonight, but along with that drop in temperature, will come a low chance of rain and very, very gusty winds for your Sunday. We'll talk more about what you can expect for the rest of the weekend coming up in just a bit. Courtney. Thank you, Katie. Well, he was paralyzed in a car accident during the winter storm in South Texas, and now he's already standing on his feet. 16 year old Ernie Martinez landed at a unique center at University Hospital, and doctors there are just amazed at his recovery so far. This week, he was finally discharged from the rehab center in great part due to an incredible piece of technology. This is never how star high school athlete 16 year old Ernie Martinez ever imagined himself. And there was a little block of ice and um, we kind of shifted to the left, then right, then left again, then we went under the ditch and then we started flipping. And I don't remember flying up, but I remember being in the air, seeing the floor and then I passed out. February 14th, he almost lost his life on the icy roads of Laredo, where he's from. He woke up at University Hospital in San Antonio. I couldn't feel my legs or anything under my, my chest. I told him he had injured his spine. There's a spinal cord that runs through the spine and that spinal cord helps the brain communicate with the rest of the body. Dr. Jeannie Hardin is the director of the University Hospital's Pediatric Inpatient Rehabilitation Unit, which just opened in October 2019. It's the only center of its kind in South Texas, allowing severely injured children to accomplish the impossible. One, two, three, push through your hands. Other doctors said Ernie may never walk again, yet here he is thanks to a wearable machine called the exoskeleton. It allows patients to stand and walk, which stretches Ernie's muscles and puts pressure on his bones, preserving bone health, preparing him to one day walk on his own. Try to just think about a straight line and like you're kicking a soccer ball. That he can do, and there's no doubt in his mind he'll be doing it for real sometime in the future. 
I just want my legs back. I'm gonna get them soon. They're just asleep. But the exoskeleton will help me get them back. Going home! Yeah! <laughs> Strong teenager right there. Ernie's family wants other people with spinal cord injuries to know attitude and support really matter. An improvement is possible. Certainly wish him the best. Today, the city of San Antonio unveiled its first ever cricket field in collaboration with Cricket San Antonio. That new field located at 9700 Rochelle Road opened with Mayor Ron Nuremberg and many other city leaders in attendance for the field's inaugural game. Cricket is a ball and bat game similar to baseball. It is especially popular in England and India. We are happy on part of Cricket of San Antonio to give back to community, give back to our city. We want to expand this game of cricket uh, to our local people here in San Antonio. He says the city is considering a Cricket SA Day, a city holiday which would be celebrated in the last Saturday in March every year. Still ahead on the night beat, a nine-year-old has died after trying to cross the Rio Grande with her mother and three-year-old brother. This is nearly 500 migrant girls are arriving in San Diego. The latest, next. A nine-year-old girl has died while crossing the border into the United States. This tragedy coming amid the growing humanitarian crisis, thousands of migrants making the dangerous journey and unaccompanied minors being housed in overcrowded facilities. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimbert with the latest. Tragedy on the U.S.-Mexico border. A nine-year-old girl has died while trying to cross the Rio Grande. The Border Patrol says they found her, her mother, and three-year-old brother unconscious on March 20th. Both the woman and boy survived. Over the last month, border officials say they've stopped an average of 5,000 people a day. Officials expecting that number to grow as we get closer to summer. The Border Patrol and Health and Human Services, all the government officials tell us they are doing the best they can but they're being overwhelmed by sheer numbers. More than 18,000 unaccompanied minors now in U.S. custody, that number increasing by nearly 1,000 in one day. They're children. They're not a political football. They're not a talking point or a photo opportunity or a statistic. They are children who have already suffered so much already. In San Diego, officials toured a new facility for migrant teenage girls. We were asked by the U.S. Uh, federal government uh, to provide a temporary home for young people who need a place to go that is safe and will keep them uh, well cared for while we do the important work of reuniting them with families or sponsors. This new temporary shelter will be able to house more than 1,400 girls, 500 of them arriving Saturday, another 250 expected Monday, and hundreds more expected to arrive in the days to come. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. It was a warm one from here in San Antonio all the way down to the border where it was much warmer today. Yes, yes. Uh, it was like almost summer-ish yeah. yeah. at times today. A little early for this. Especially with the humidity. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, not that not that fast. Um, so here's temperatures now. I can't wait to show you the high temperatures from today. Uh, it's still pretty warm out there in spots. Still 83 in Catula, 80 in Pleasanton. We're down to 73 at the airport right now. Low 70s in the Hill Country. But here are the high temperatures today. Laredo made it up to 99. Their record high for today's date is 105. So they didn't quite make it, but they got pretty close. 90 in Beeville, 93 the high in Pleasanton, 94 in Del Rio. And at the airport here in town, we made it up to 88. So unseasonably warm for this time of year. That that's for sure. We lost the clouds this afternoon and this evening. That's a good reason why we were able to warm up so quickly. And we've got more clouds well down to our southeast in the Gulf of Mexico there and also starting to see a bit more in the way of cloud cover off in central Texas north of Austin. Skies are pretty clear around the area for now and we've just got some ground clutter there on radar. Very active severe weather outbreak ongoing across portions of far east Texas, really Arkansas, Louisiana now into portions of Mississippi and Tennessee. That's because we've got a front sweeping across Texas and parts of the country tonight. This front will move through overnight and sets us up for it's going to be a much different day tomorrow, so this will offer a chance of some isolated showers. The rain chance is not zero, uh, but it's not as high as we'd like it to be. That's for sure. So we'll talk about the chance of showers, but the bigger effect with this front when it sneaks through tonight for your Sunday, that's going to be the big uptick in wind speeds. We are talking gusty, gusty winds pretty much all day tomorrow. So we'll start with the chance of some isolated showers. This front will swing through while we're sleeping tonight. 
Closer to dawn tomorrow morning, some isolated showers will be possible and we'll hold on to a low chance of some rain essentially through midday tomorrow. Notice best chances of some showers are going to be south and east of San Antonio, really off to the east of 35 there, closer to the Gulf of Mexico. I think that's also where we could hold on to some cloud cover for a longer period of time into tomorrow afternoon. So we could see our high temperatures down several degrees down to the south and to the east while everyone else gets to warm up a little bit more. So keep in mind chance of rain tomorrow is slim, but you've got a better chance at seeing a shower if you're south and east of San Antonio. Now let's talk about the wind speeds. They are going to start cranking overnight tonight by early tomorrow morning, even before sunrise. It is going to be very windy out there. These are your sustained wind speeds. They'll be about 15 to 25 miles per hour, essentially all day tomorrow. They'll start to pick up tonight and they'll stay that way all through the day on Sunday, certainly through midday. Now, as we get into late afternoon, early evening, they'll start to let up just a bit, but it will stay plenty breezy through tomorrow afternoon. It won't be until after sunset that winds really start to relax tomorrow. So get ready for a windy day. Those were the sustained wind speeds. These are our wind gusts tomorrow, essentially from sunrise all the way through sunset tomorrow. Wind gusts will likely be above 30 miles per hour, but I think we could see some gusts up near 40, 45 miles per hour at times tomorrow. So if you haven't done it yet, if you've got a little bit of time tonight, make sure you've got your loose outdoor and patio items secured because they will go flying tomorrow. And again, even by tomorrow morning, it's going to be much wind, much more windy out there than what we saw today. Temperature wise, we'll start off a touch cooler tomorrow morning. As that front comes through, it will bring in some slightly drier and cooler air. So look at your high temperatures tomorrow afternoon. Certainly not as warm as it was today, but again, that wind is just going to be, I think, a big nuisance tomorrow for Palm Sunday. Similar setup middle of next week, another front early Wednesday will set us up for a low chance of rain and windy conditions by middle of next week. Otherwise, pretty quiet extended forecast. Guys, I definitely put away some loose chairs on the patio. Yes. That's for sure. Thank you, Katie. Uh -huh. It was not much of a bullfight at the AT&T <laughs> Center tonight. The Spurs easily taming the Chicago Bulls. They did. The Chicago Bulls just what the Spurs needed to end their four game losing streak. The Spurs led the Bulls by as many as 36 points. We got it coming up. Plus, LaMarcus has a new team coming up. Hosting the Bulls tonight, both teams looking to break losing streaks. First quarter, Derek White with a sweet ball fake, then he drives the paint for a finger roll. It's 11-7 Spurs, timeout Bulls, part of an 8-0 run by San Antonio. Other end now, Jante Murray steals the rock, breaks out, feeds Jakob Pertle for a layup and a 15-9 Spurs advantage. Now Kelvin Johnson will grab a defensive rebound and watch this. He goes coast to coast, then lays it in left-handed off the glass. Spurs go up 23-11 and they led 33-20 after one. Second quarter, Bulls miss a shot. Drew Eubank saves the ball from going out of bounds to DeJounte. He passes the Rudy, who finds Patty Mills, and his three-pointer is good, and the Spurs are rolling 38-22. to Cue up White to Drew Eubanks for some jam, and it's 46-27 to San Antonio. Late in the half now, DeMar passes to Pirtle for a layup to cap an 18-0 run by San Antonio, and it's 58-27 silver and black. They led 65 39 and halftime. Third quarter was pretty much much of the same. DeMar drives in for a big time dunk and the Spurs go up 30, 71, 41. Now they let off the gas a bit, allowing Chicago to get closer in the fourth, but it was too little, too late. Spurs win 120 to 104, snapping the four game skid. Seven Spurs reach double digits in scoring, including all five starters. Overall, we shared it pretty well. DeMar and Derek DeJounte had 22 assists between the three of them and only four turnovers. So. Uh, that was a big part of you know getting some open shots, and I thought our intensity was good defensively. Yeah, good tempo, good pace. Everybody was playing the right way, getting good looks. So um, obviously, this is something we can build off of, and um, it was a good win, a much needed win for us. Spurs will host the Kings Monday night, 7:30 at the AT&T Center. The first of two games and three nights with Sacramento. And former Spurs big man Lamarcus Aldridge has agreed to sign with the Brooklyn Nets for the rest of the season, per multiple reports. The Heat were considered their front runner for LA. Aldridge is 35 and joins a star-studded roster in the Eastern Conference: Kevin Durant, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, Blake Griffin, and DeAndre Jordan. Brooklyn started the day second in the East, one and a half games behind the Sixers. On Thursday, the Spurs in L.A. agreed to a contract buyout for a reported $5.8 million, ending his stay with the Spurs after five-plus seasons. He's expected to see significant time at center 
for the Nets. March Madness is heating up with the Sweet 16 tipping off today in both the men's and women's Division I tournaments. On the men's side, number one Baylor took on number five Villanova in Indianapolis. Second half, Wildcats with the lead. Brandon Slater drives left for a monster slam dunk. Look again as Nova leads 39-33. Wow. 12 minutes left. Macy Oteague blows by his defender and this game is tied at 39. Moments later, Jared Butler spins and scores for the Bears' first lead since 6.42 in the first half. Ensuing possession, Nova turns it over, but we're on the break, passes to Davion Mitchell for a layup and a four-point Bears lead. After facing a season-high seven-point halftime deficit, Baylor comes back to win 62-51. They force Villanova into 16 turnovers, nine in the second half, which was key in the final outcome. We knew if we wanted to win, um, we have to turn them over. We got to make them feel comfortable. They're a really fundamental team. They don't turn the ball over. They're number one in the country not turn the ball over. So we know for us to win, we have to get them out their comfort zone. I think we did a really good job of that. Baylor will next face number three, Arkansas, in the Elite Eight. Midwest region, number 12, Oregon State, faced off with number eight, Loyola, Chicago. First half, closing seconds. Warth Avathiche beats the buzzer, and Oregon State led 24-16 at halftime. Second half, long pass goes to Ethan Thompson for a slam dunk. He led the Beavers with a game high 22, and Oregon State wins 65-58, advancing to the Elite Eight for the first time since 1982. And later in sports, Melissa Smith was perfect. Perfect from the field to help the Baylor Lady Bears advance to the Elite Eight. Thank you, Larry. We're going to hit the locker room for a quick halftime, and then we'll have the second <laughs> half of Night Beat right after that. Well, authorities in Virginia Beach have identified the two victims who died in separate shootings there. Yeah, DeShayla Harris, a 28-year-old woman from Norfolk, and Donovan Lynch of Virginia Beach, the 25-year-old killed in an officer-involved shooting incident. Here's ABC's Elizabeth Schulze with a look at the chaotic night in Virginia Beach. A violent night in Virginia Beach in the city's oceanfront resort area. What you can see is we have a very chaotic incident, a very uh, chaotic uh, night in the beach, uh, many different crime scenes. Police say late Friday, a conflict between a group of people led to a physical fight, during which several individuals produced firearms. Eight people were taken to local hospitals with gunshot wounds. EMS is going to be sending multiple ambulances. If you can self-dispatch onto a call zone unit, please do that to help out. While investigating the incident, blocks away, police heard more gunfire. A woman succumbing to her injuries at that scene. We don't believe it was part of the original shooting uh, behind us. An officer in the vicinity of that second crime scene encountered an armed adult male. Uh, that resulted in an individual being confronted by a uniformed Virginia Beach police officer, uh, resulting in a police intervention shooting. That individual is deceased. The officer involved, a five-year veteran, now on administrative leave during the investigation, which is standard procedure in police-involved shootings. Meanwhile, Virginia Beach police also report that as these incidents were unfolding, another officer was hit by a car. He was treated for his injuries and released from the hospital. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. And funeral services were held yesterday for two of the eight victims killed when a gunman targeted three Metro Atlanta spas 10 days ago. Xiao Jia Tan was one of those victims, dying just days before celebrating her 50th birthday. Tan's family in China now worries for the safety of her only child, Jamie, whose father and Tan's ex-husband, Michael Webb, addressed family and friends at a memorial service Friday, speaking out against mass shootings of this kind. Do we really have to quarantine ourselves to avoid being gunned down in the grocery store, our schools, our businesses, our places of worship? Must our flags always fly at half-mast? We as a country should be ashamed. Another family held a memorial for their mother and grandmother yesterday. Young AU, her youngest son, said on GoFundMe on the GoFundMe page for her, his mother was a Korean-born American citizen, a kind-hearted and amazing woman who loved to introduce people to her home-cooked Korean food and Korean karaoke. The price you pay to fill up your car or truck or SUV has been on a four-month climb. Oh. Try to find the right place here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
moving. They're up just 17 cents in the past month. So what's ahead? And so many Americans are looking forward to a better summer of travel than last one. Uh, one expert tells 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz, we might just see blockbuster demand. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. It's the weekend and Blanca Brown is revved up for a road trip. Remember those? Right now I'm headed to the coast, to Corpus. Folks hitting the highways are paying 80 cents more than this time last year. I kind of had a predicted gas prices going up anyways by this summer, just because the earth is moving again. The earth put it in park one year ago, sending gas demand and prices into a free fall. Now? We are now at pre-COVID levels back to early March of 2020. Just ahead of COVID, when Americans were getting out looking for every roll of toilet paper they could find. Oil industry analyst Patrick DeHaan says demand has been outpacing supply for a few months. And now this, a massive tanker blocking the Suez Canal, where 10 percent of the world's oil supply flows. That kinks the hose, so to speak, and pushes prices up. The longer the clog, the higher the price. The average right now in San Antonio is about 250 a gallon. Question is, as people plan their summer road trips, will we hit $3 a gallon? DeHaan says in Texas, likely not. No doubt there is pent up wanderlust. So as COVID cases go down, expect road travel to go up. Uh, dare I say a blockbuster year for demand. Anthony Jones is already oh, yeah, buckled ready. up. We're ready to go. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Still ahead, tragedy in the southeastern U.S. as tornadoes claim several lives and leave entire communities devastated. The latest on recovery efforts. Recovery efforts now underway after 23 tornadoes formed across the southeastern United States between Thursday night and Friday morning. The storms left six people dead in some communities in ruins, but at least one sign of hope has emerged from the wreckage. CNN meteorologist Derek Van Dam has more. Violent tornadoes leaving a trail of devastation across the southern U.S. and leaving communities in shambles. In Birmingham, Alabama, roofs torn off of homes, some others ripped from their foundation, and residents like Dina Cook left racing to protect precious memories. I didn't even think. I couldn't, I couldn't think that. I mean, it's just I really couldn't think past that moment. I didn't even think about what was gone. I just wanted to get all my pictures out of the house. Others just remembering the precious lives lost. It's terrible, man. Like, to know my family was in this stuff. Like, they gone. Shelby County search and rescue teams describe the damage as catastrophic, with the twisters indiscriminately destroying homes while leaving others untouched. After the storms cleared, providing a short break for residents, the cleanup process has begun. But unfortunately, this will be short-lived for another round of severe weather as possible this weekend across parts of the same region. Locals became volunteers helping those hardest hit by providing basic necessities to get through this natural disaster. With all the heartache that has been witnessed here, a glimmer of hope as we approach the week of Easter. This cross and this purple scarf remaining virtually untouched as homes were destroyed around it. After riding out the storm in her closet, Cook noticed and rearranged the scarf out of respect, a truly symbolic image for believers who observe Lent. Cook says she may have lost the roof over her head, but she has not lost her faith. And my cross is still there because God was with all of these people and us. I'm CNN meteorologist Derek Van Dam reporting in Birmingham. Outside with live cam, very warm and a bit humid here in South Texas. And those are tough scenes to see for uh, friends over in the deep south. And uh, as the meteorologist mentioned, there's ongoing severe weather in that region tonight, not necessarily the Birmingham area in Alabama. Things are pretty quiet there for now, but these red boxes you see here, those are tornado watch boxes, meaning tornadoes are possible. That extends from far, far east Texas through north Louisiana, southern Arkansas, now starting to work into Mississippi. We've got several tornado warnings here, flash flooding 
all the way up through Middle Tennessee there in the Nashville area. This will move east overnight, but thankfully for the Birmingham area and that portion of Alabama, the storm should weaken as they continue to move east. We'll talk more about what you can expect here at home locally coming up after the break. Spring is in the air in so many different ways, whether it's the oak leaves falling, the catkins coming down, or <laughs> yes. all the pollens out there. Yeah, if you were celebrating Passover tonight, happy Passover. Yes. I'm wearing my Passover colors, but I hope your Seder was all inside yeah. because <laughs> that, that oak is everywhere. It, it is, is yellow outside. I fought the lawn this week and the lawn won. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dad jokes, your turn. It, uh, it I got nothing. Like sometimes, yeah. <laughs> you have um, a latka of them. There you oh. go. Passover Oof. joke. Wow. Nice. That came out of nowhere, too. I don't know where. <laughs> Guys, I can't live up to that. You stay this late, <laughs> you get all kinds of treats. <laughs> I can't live up to that. I have no jokes. Um, the wind is tomorrow is not going to be a joke at all. It's really going to get your attention. And Tim, you alluded to this at 5 o'clock. Yes. The wind tomorrow it could stir up a lot of things, and I think oak is going to be one of those things that it stirs up. So we do have some changes for the rest of the weekend. Today, of course, we got in plenty of sun this afternoon. That warmed us up to the upper 80s. Tomorrow, it will be cooler. We do have a front coming through, so it will be cooler tomorrow. Not cool. You won't really need a jacket. We'll be in the mid-70s, but certainly a difference from today. And also the big story tomorrow will be the wind. So we're looking at gusty winds pretty much all day long tomorrow. Wind gusts up as high as 40. I would even say we could touch 45 miles per hour in places on Sunday. So essentially from sunrise all the way through sunset, winds will be gusty. So again, if you have some time this evening up uh, tonight, I know it's getting pretty late, but if you haven't done it yet, this is the kind of wind where you'll want to secure your lawn ornaments, patio decorations, because if they're loose enough, they certainly could go flying. So in terms of what this wind could pick up, do you think oak <laughs> is one of the things that could get stirred up in the wind tomorrow? Also, we'll have to watch this closely. But I'm afraid we could have maybe another issue with some dust from West Texas tomorrow. Ground is still very dry in West Texas. So as this front moves through the state tonight and tomorrow, strong winds settle in behind it. We could see some dust be picked up from portions of West Texas. And there's the potential that some of that could try to wander our direction. Our dust forecast model here does hint at, and it's kind of hard to see this very light tan color, does hint at some dust being detected tomorrow, being pulled down from the north. So. <laughs> something to watch the oak, but maybe also some dust tomorrow. We'll keep an eye on that for you uh, throughout the day on Sunday and let you know if there will be any dust moving in. 73 at the airport right now. Our dew point is still pretty high, um, and it felt pretty humid out there. That's uh, that's for sure. No rain for our area right now. What you see here, that green, that is just some ground clutter that our radar site is detecting. We do have a small shot at rain uh, as this front comes through tonight. Some isolated showers will be possible. Most of us, though, should miss out on any rain, uh, but through mid to late morning tomorrow, uh, there certainly could be a couple of showers down mainly southeast of San Antonio. Temperature wise tomorrow morning, a bit cooler, 60 in Del Rio, near 60 here in San Antonio, low 60s in Pleasanton. Uh, and as I mentioned, through mid late morning tomorrow, a couple of lingering showers will be possible down to the southeast, but don't get your hopes up for rain tomorrow. Again, the biggest inconvenience for Sunday will be because of the wind. Here's a look at your high temperatures tomorrow afternoon, certainly. Uh, not as warm as it was today, much more seasonable. Nice day on Monday as those winds relax. And then by middle of next week, another low shot at rain on Wednesday. And another windy day looks to be on tap there. Otherwise, pretty quiet, guys. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. All right, Baylor moves on with the help of a hometown girl. Yeah, and Alyssa Smith, perfect from a field today. And the Lady Bears of Baylor needed every single one of those buckets to fight off a very resilient Michigan team. And is Stanford playing its best basketball? Keanu Williams has the answer coming up. crazy just to know like I played 40 minutes and didn't miss one shot I mean I, it hasn't sunk in yet but that's that's a crazy number. And Alyssa Smith went 11 for 11 in the Lady Bears Sweet 16 victory today in Big Board Sports. Push for the first time in the NCAA tournament since the 2019 title game. The two seed Baylor Lady Bears picked up a 78-75 overtime win against number six Michigan this afternoon at the Alamo Dome in the Riverwalk region. It's called Survive and Advance. Nas Hillman made this layup for Michigan, tying this at 63 with 17 seconds left and to force overtime. 
Then an OT, Moon Urson made this hoop in the final bucket of the game, and then Baylor had to survive a last second three by the Wolverines. That was no good. Now East Central alum Alyssa Smith tied an NCAA regional record, going 11 for 11 from the floor, including one from distance, and scoring a game-high 24 points to lead Baylor. And she did it with her family and friends in the stands. It's crazy. I mean, I heard everything they were saying. I mean, I love playing in front of my family, love playing in front of all my uh, friends. So, I mean, just for them to be there is super special to me. The record speaks for itself. She um, actually, if she makes one more free throw, she's perfect from the foul line as well. Um, just a just a phenomenal player. I thought she was an All-American on the floor for us tonight. Um, I thought that when we um, struggled, she was a, a leader somewhat. You know, Liz has just grown up a lot on that floor, and um, thank God she's on our team tonight because she made some big-time shots for us. Baylor advances to their 10th Elite Eight in program history. Kristen Williams scored 27 points to lead number one UConn to a 92-72 win against fifth-seeded Iowa today in the Sweet 16 of the Women's NCAA Tournament. The game marked the return of UConn coach Gina Oriema, who missed the opening two rounds because he was recovering from the coronavirus. He arrived in San Antonio on Wednesday. So UConn will face Baylor Monday night in the Elite Eight. It's one versus two. The late game tonight featured number three Arizona, number two Texas A&M in the Mercado region. Second quarter, Eli Wilson makes a jumper for the Aggies and we're tied at 30. But Arizona would slowly pull away after that thanks to Ari McDonald and three-point shooting. She scored a game-high 31 points, and Zona made 13 three-pointers at just two for AM, and the Aggies are out 74 to 59. Number one overall seed Stanford will play number five Missouri State in the Alamo region semifinal tomorrow afternoon. These two met in the Sweet 16 two years ago with Stanford winning 55-46. Stanford opened up the tournament this year by beating Utah Valley 87 to 44, and then in the second round they top Oklahoma State 73-62. Stanford led by 20 points midway through the second quarter in that game and then took their foot off the gas, allowing Oklahoma State to make the final score a bit more respectable. Keanu Williams was asked if Stanford is playing its best basketball right now. I feel like there, there's always areas where we can improve on. Um, I feel like that first game, we, we came out really strong, played really well. Um, I think in the second game, you know, when once we had the lead, we kind of, you know, took our foot off the gas. Um, so to answer your question, uh, I don't think we're playing our best basketball, and, and I feel like that's a good thing. Um, this is a time where you want to be playing your best basketball, but I think there's always areas where we can improve um, and making sure that we hit, hit all the check boxes to win games. Stanford and Missouri State will square off tomorrow 2 p.m. live here on KSAT 12. Good to see our hometown girl doing so well. Yeah, great. Thank you, Larry. Well, from stealing toys to stealing hearts, meet the viral pup who got his big break by breaking and entering. Tell me something good is next. All right, dog lovers, tonight something good is for you. Yes, this dog is settling into his new forever home after getting attention for his shoplifting. He's about a year old and his name is Sisu. He repeatedly broke into a Dollar General in Duplin County, North Carolina, and stole this purple unicorn. The store eventually called Animal Services and the responding officer decided to buy the toy for him. On his adoption information, the shelter says Sisu knows sit, lay, heal, and loves unicorns from Dollar General. Now he's stolen someone's heart, and he and his toy have found a new home. Everybody's got a favorite stuffy. I'm glad that he found his <laughs> home. Real quick, I made a lot of mistakes at 5 o'clock. I said today was Sunday when it was Saturday, and I also said that the Ten Commandments ran tonight. It's actually next Saturday, so I apologize for my absent-mindedness today. I will not leave him alone again, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I was full of mistakes at 5. Uh, one more reminder, it is going to be very windy tomorrow, a little cooler, but the wind is really what's going to get your attention. A couple of showers can't be rolled out either. Looking ahead, another windy day with a low shot of rain next Wednesday, guys. Thank you, Katie. When we make mistakes, we acknowledge them and move on. Yes. That's all of our time for tonight. Thanks for watching. Be sure to catch GMSA tomorrow starting at 6. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.